morning and welcome as we worship on the second last Sunday of the church calendar. The emphasis today is the saints triumphant. We'll be following the order of service on page 38 in the red hymnal. Our opening hymn, 210, Who Knows When Death May Overtake Me, 210. <laughs> Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from earth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Bless me from my sin and take away my guilt. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading for this Sunday is recorded in the prophet Isaiah, reading in chapter 52. Awake, awake, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust, rise up, sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. At first my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately Assyria has oppressed them. And now what do I have here, declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day long my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore in that day they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. Here ends the Old Testament reading. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 84 on page 96. <laughs>
Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica, reading in chapter 4. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Here ends the epistle reading. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Hallelujah. recorded in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. And while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our sermon hymn number 211, I Know of a Sleep in Jesus' Name, 211. Thank you.
Grace and peace are ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God on the second last Sunday of the church year, Saints Triumphant Sunday, is from Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever. The book of Daniel has much in it that makes us wince when we think of it. We who live in a country who has a guaranteed freedom of religion under our U.S. Constitution shudder to read about Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who because they refused to worship a false god, a statue, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But God was with them and they survived without even the smell of smoke. Or how about Daniel, in danger of being devoured by starving lions because he refused to pray to any king. He would only worship the one true God of the Bible. Beside the historical portion of Daniel's book, there are prophecies that we began studying this morning in our Bible class. Prophecies that terrified Daniel and are scary even for us today. Although most of the book of Daniel contains a somber and sobering message, the key note of the book of Daniel here in its closing chapter, our text is joy. God's final word to Daniel is a word of cheer. We are told how the archangel Michael will come and protect God's people. We're told about the great resurrection that is coming and our deliverance into eternal glory. Instead of this being a time of high anxiety, it should be a time of low anxiety or no anxiety at all. First of all, because God has a good track record. We can depend on him. His faithful ones will be honored in the end. In the end, but forever and ever. Our world is sometimes described as a madhouse. It isn't so much a madhouse as it is an arena, a coliseum, a battlefield where war is constantly raging between the forces of God and the forces of anti God. There's not a single area of human life which has not been claimed by God, but it's also counterclaimed by God's enemies. And these struggles intensify with each passing generation. This is a reality based on God's word and a wise look at history on our part. The Savior tells us, Matthew 24, if that time had not been cut short, no one would survive. These words remind us that being a Christian does not mean that we're wearing rose-colored glasses, that everything is pink and pretty because we're Christians. Exactly the opposite is true. Beware of those who in Jesus' name paint a picture of Christians as being worldly successful, free of trouble, free of illness, free of poverty, free of all the troubles and pains that come with life. 
Some of you will remember Reverend Ike. Remember him? God wants you to see green. Well, how many of us can claim that we see a lot of green? That was a while ago. Joel Osteen in Texas preaches a similar message today, though, and he has a big following, a massive cathedral to broadcast this message week after week. But the reality is that for us Christians, things are not rosy and pink. God's word and what is really happening calls for us to take a look at the real world. And yet there's no reason to despair. There's no reason to live in anxiety or frettering. There is victory in the end. God will prevail. He promises that he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. Our text promises that he will send the archangel Michael as his special guardian of the church. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will rise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened before from the beginning of nations until now. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. The huffing and puffing of the enemy of God will finally come to a close. God's deliverance will come to everyone whose name is written in the book. We might picture our names as being written in the book of life as a Christian family tree. Die Familienregister, the family register in those big, beautiful old family Bibles sitting on the dining room table. And I scratch my head once in a while and wonder, were they ever opened other than to write names in them? But those are the names of the believers written in God's book of life. With the power by which Jesus raised himself from the dead, Jesus will raise up all the dead. Verse 2 of our text says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to everlasting contempt. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter, death is the last enemy be destroyed. In the great resurrection on the last day, God's people will rise to everlasting life. They will live with God in a perfect and never-ending existence. Those who spent their lives avoiding God will experience a different fate. They will hear God say, you wanted to be without me? So be it. Now you will be forever without me. They will be sentenced to a perpetual divorce from God. A never-ending experience of shame and contempt. God's eternal rejection. I gave you my son by grace and mercy and you have rejected me. God's word will stand. If we are his through faith in Jesus blood and righteousness, we need have no anxiety. Instead, we know his faithful will be honored. In this present world, we believers live with the solid hope of victory. It's a concrete promise. It's a concrete truth because God has promised it. On the last day, we will no longer look through tears to victory. Then, on the last day, victory will be reality. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Those who have led others to their Savior will receive the reward. Those who have led others by their words and kindly actions to follow Jesus will be especially Remember, these have been lights and stars guiding us in our lives. Godly parents, the pastors who have served us, 
our Sunday school teachers. The noble army men and boys, the matron and the maid, around the Savior's throne rejoice in robes of light arrayed. They climb the steep ascent of heaven through peril, toil, and pain. O oh God, to us may grace be given to follow in their train. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. We give thanks to you, O Lord, and call upon your name. We sing your praises as we tell of your wonderful works. We seek your strength and desire your presence continually. We remember the wonderful works you have done and the judgments you have uttered. Again and again, you have demonstrated in the world's history that nations who forget you and act contrary to your will fall under your judgment. We confess, O Lord, that our nation is not without guilt. If you were to deal with us in justice, we too would fall under your judgment. Therefore, we do not ask that you deal with us justly, but we appeal to your mercy. For the sake of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask you to blot out our transgressions and remember our sins no more. You have not revealed the day or the hour when Christ will come again to judge the world. Keep us steadfast in the faith by your Spirit. Give us zeal to proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world as a testimony to all nations. May we be among those who will endure unto the end and thus be saved. Extend your healing hand to the sick, your presence to the lonely, your hope to the discouraged, and your comfort to the bereaved. May your peace permeate the council of nations. Grant harmony to your church on earth that your will may be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving for Tanner and uh, Scarlett Austed at the birth of their, their daughter. Blessed are you, O God, that you have graciously sustained this mother in her peril and pain and gladdened her heart with the gift of a daughter. And we pray, keep both mother and child in your protection. Give them strength and health. Turn away whatever might prove hurtful to them in body or soul. And as you will be pleased to receive this child into the kingdom of your grace by the washing of holy baptism, grant unto this child your continual blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We can
continue our worship with hymn 208. 208. Great God, what do I see in thee? God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. Bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
we have several birthdays to catch up on. Uh, we missed Beth's birthday on the second. I'd like to sing happy birthday to Beth. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Beth. Happy birthday to you. And Mike, our organist, on the eighth. just for me because God sent Michael here as a protector. He's done the same for me. I have a man in my life. His name is Michael. Michael Arby. Yes, he is. And we're going to be married in May. Yes. Yes. Luann and Kurt. Say hello to everybody. Thank you. 